Duan, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Annie. It's super great to see you again. You look stunning yes. as always. Oh, right back at you. Thrilled to have you here. Now, oh. Duan, we're going to jump right in because <laughs> we know that there's always a moment in people's lives where their backs are up against the wall. And it's not the fact that their backs are up against the wall that makes the difference. The difference is what they choose to do in that moment. And you had a moment like this where your back was against the wall. It seemed like everything was falling apart. Nothing was going your way, but then you decided not to just take it, you decided to do something different. And that set you on a trajectory that changed the entire course of your life. So tell us about that moment and then what you did. So I'm married, I'm 30, I have eight-month-old baby. My husband and I have this really unexpected split. He takes the car, the money. I end up losing a house in foreclosure. Like it's a really big like I what we call like a come to Jesus moment. You're just like, I, I don't even know what to do now. And I don't know how many job skills and I've waited tables in my entire decade of my twenties. So I don't have any actual like skill. I didn't go to college. So I was just really left, kind of left hanging. And how long did all this take? Between like him leaving and me doing my first deal and all of it, it was probably about a two year process. <laughs> two years can be like, I mean, yeah. you just ticked through a list of like your partner left you, you had a new baby at home, you had a foreclosure, he took all your money, you didn't have any job default. Like those are life things that we hope never happen to us in the oh, entire God. span of our lives. And so for them to happen, even in a two year span for you is, is incredible. It, it was actually, you know, looking, cause I'm 65 now. So looking back over all the decades and things that have happened and, you know, we have people that die, things happen, illness, like all that, but that was probably truly the lowest point in my entire life. Even since then, I haven't had a point quite as low as that because it's like everything was shattered. I remember going knocking on doors for over three full weeks, like all day, like a hundred, a couple. And people were just like, no, 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 no. And, and that was just because they didn't know what to say. So I would just say, hey, I see you're in foreclosure. I'd like to buy your house and decorate and fix it up. And people were like, no. Well, let me just pause there for our, for, for you, the listener, to think about that and like what three weeks of that might feel like for you. I mean, have you ever oh. been in a situation where you feel like I just can't go on with this? Like this just isn't working, but I'm, I'm going to try one more day. I'm going to try one more house, one more knock. And sometimes I think in this progress, this, this life that we are living to be able to invest more, to be able to do better for our families. Sometimes it boils down to those in, in tiny moments. And in those moments where you, Duan, were knocking on the next door after two and a half weeks of doing this with your baby and two and a half weeks of not seeing any progress. Nothing. That doesn't sound like a lot right now, but it's a lot in the moment. Just have to make one more phone call, one more phone call, because the next one could be the one. As in my case, I knocked on Barbara's door and she's like, yeah, I'd love to work with you. So then I just sort of stood there and I thought... <laughs> this has never happened before. No. I didn't, I had never even actually read the Florida real estate contract. So this is my first one. It has me explain the whole contract. I'm like, oh, sure. So yeah, I've got my thing. I'm like, oh, I'm reading and I'm, I'm kind of winging it. And I'm on like the second page. It's, I just remember there was the word estoppel. And, and she says, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I sit there and I said, look, you know what? I, I don't know. You're my first deal. I don't even, I've never read this contract. I honestly, I don't know. All I know is that you're in trouble. I'm in trouble. I can help you. I feel like if we work together, we'll, we'll split the deal. It'll be great for both of us. And she was like, okay. I thought, okay, there you go. You just were straight with her I had and to. you, you were honest and you talked to her human to human yeah. and forged this connection in that moment. It sounds like, so then it carried that deal forward because it, you were honest. It, at my, to me, a whole year salary in one shot. I was like, dang, I liked doing that. Ayla was with me every day. My ex can kiss my ass and I've got money. <laughs> And I'm not moving back with my parents. This is what I'm going to do. 
So, and then I did the next deal. And then I thought, huh, okay, I like this. And I'm going to do another one. And then now 30, almost 35 years have gone by. Wow. 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 You can't use excuses with me. I had every excuse in the world to go back home, tuck my tail, get on the welfare, like all the things. I could have done any of those things. And I was just like, I'm not doing that. I, I want to be a mom and I want to be a good mom and I want to be a fun mom. And I'm not letting my big dream get smashed by this situation that's in front of me. And so as they say, success is on the other side of your comfort zone. There's no time when I was like, oh, I got this. I'm not scared. I was scared all the time. But I was more scared of being stuck or going back in my life based on where I'd already brought myself to. Yeah. It's like they say, your business grows to the extent that you do. And so you are your biggest gating factor. So if you can grow yourself, then your business or whatever venture you're working on can grow. Which, Speaking of which, you have to tell us about this town. that <laughs> You told me a little bit about it, but I know it wasn't exactly your intention to go in and have all these buildings. So how did it unfold and, and where are you now with that project? It's on the Mississippi River, like right on the river across the bridge and there's Illinois. So it's right there. And there's all of these little river towns that have like shopping and antique stores and, you know, music and all this stuff. And Clinton is like a ghost town. It's like three blocks wide and three blocks. This is this little area. And this 90% of the buildings are boarded up and it's like a ghost town. So at, so at like the 15th reunion, because we've been married 20 years now, I was like, you know, We've been coming here for 15 years and the downtown, it still looks like a ghost town. Maybe we should see if they're, if it's an opportunity zone, are they doing like a re-beautification, like a bring back the downtown? Are they doing anything? And maybe we could buy like a building. So that, <laughs> so, <laughs> as you know me, we're like a building, a building. So we, so we, we buy the building, actually the building that I'm in here. Um, it's 20,000 square feet. They were asking like 175 and we found out who owns it and the people that owned it knew Bill's dad and they'd already moved to Arizona. And at the end of the day, we bought it for 32,000 bucks. So I'm like 20,000 square feet, $32,000. We'll buy it. And then we worked on it. And then someone else says, Hey, the Twifers bought my building, so they told a friend, and Carol <laughs> called and said, I've got three buildings, and my husband's been deceased for a decade, and I want to just move to Florida. Would you buy my buildings? And we're like, well, I guess, but you'll have to own or finance them because, you know, they were a lot. And then, like, another person calls and says, hey, I heard you bought Carol's buildings. Will you buy my buildings? <laughs> And then I want to just like say how yeah. full, what a full circle moment this must have been because <laughs> okay. here you were all these years ago knocking on doors nobody would give you their building and here you're not even asking right. and people are coming out of the woodwork they're like oh, buy mine buy mine <laughs> Well, hey, Duan, we're going to, with that, we're going to move into the final part of our show, the Life and Money Show Spotlight Round. We're going to ask you three questions that we ask all our guests. Are you okay. ready, Duan? I'm ready. So share with us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. You know, I would have to say something Bill and I have been really focusing on the last couple of years is we're taking more time to focus on our health. I feel like to have a good life, you need to have good health. And people spend their health getting their wealth and they spend their wealth buying back their health. So we're trying to stop that right now so that we have healthy. Well, just that like they spend their health getting their wealth and then their wealth getting their health is such a dichotomy that is is worth <laughs> reflecting on like, are you, are you spending your health right now in order to build this? And how can you just start moving the needle in a different direction so that you're allowing yourself the years to, to enjoy your wealth? I love that. All right. Second question is about others' life and money. So share with us a life or money hack. So I took the time. It took about two years to retrain my brain. Every time a negative thought came in, I replaced it with a positive thought. Can you imagine it. if you did that to somebody else? It took over two years to really retrain my brain so that all my thoughts are positive. So tell us one thing you're doing to help make the world a better place, whatever that means for you. 
So I spent a lot of my time working with teenagers and kids uh, in churches and even at real estate and teaching and training and even my own grandkids to try to pass down like generational wealth and generational ideas and to try to shape the minds of of the kids that I have uh, influence over. Indeed. Well, Dwan, this has been such an enlightening conversation. You have such an inspirational story, and I love that you're continuing to grow and learn and to give back. And I know our listener is going to want to follow up with you, learn more. So tell them what's the best place that they can go. So dwanifold.com, uh, Instagram, TikTok, like Facebook, all the places. Everything is wonderful. <laughs> Everything there is wonderful. Everything is wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs>